Welcome to podcast number 36. Um, once again, I appreciate everybody taking the time to listen to these. And, um, and for the people that have written in, the people that have donated, um, and my sponsors, me uh, want to thank my, oh, that's right, still no sponsors, still no fancy uh, music, don't have any of that stuff. Uh, it's just uh, no bullshit. Let's, uh, we'll just dive right into the facts. And, and with this podcast, kind of a cool thing with this podcast, because here we are with, wow, 36 podcasts, uh, and I've got <laughs> quite the list uh, still, to, still to keep building. Uh, but I did surpass uh, 75,000 listens, so uh, I am very happy with uh, very happy with that. So again, thanks everybody, and thanks for sharing them and, and keeping this going. Um, a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes with these, so keeping me motivated. Yes, keep me motivated if you want to keep hearing this. So podcast 36, this one, um, entering and exiting that corner. And really what this is all about is let's build repeatable habits. And this particular podcast really came home uh, for me. Uh, last week at Chuckwalla, I worked with some very, very quick riders um, over the course of three days. And I was, I was still a little bit surprised at where some of the mistakes were happening. And I've had people ask me before, Oh gosh, Ken, can you just can you give me the steps for entering a corner? Give me the steps for exiting a corner? I don't want to be that guy, right? I just don't want to be that. But what instead I'm going to do is do exactly through what I'm going to do with this podcast is give you repeatable habits that will give you those steps to do that because every corner is different, every bike is different, every you know grip is different, all these different situations. Your your capacity at where you're at and your riding is different. So my goal for this this podcast is not necessarily to to um, to give you a step by step procedure, but to give you the tools that are available to give you the steps that you need. There's, I can guarantee there's something in here that 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 you'll pick up on that is that potentially could be holding you back. And again, I I just I just can't ever um, not keep coming back to the fundamentals of of what we're doing because. Again, last week I saw some uh, some riders very very quick, but we just saw some things that were in some ways very very basic that was holding them up. So here we go. Uh, let's build some repeatable habits on um, uh, on essentially getting into the corner and then exiting the corner. Um, and this is like I said, this is just so easy to overcomplicate. And really, a lot of the mistakes that I see. A lot of the mistakes I see on entry is from being reactive or being late or not being in a position to adjust. And that's really where we're going to take a step back and and try to put ourselves in that position to be proactive and to be um, in a position uh, to adjust. So we're going to take this through and you'll you'll find it uh, interesting that a lot of this ends up coming along with our whole, our whole order of the sport. So we're going to take it through with the order of the sport. And of course, in each one of these things, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that are encompassed in the order of the sport on on entry. So, first thing on entry, what's the what's the entry do? The entry just serves a purpose to put the bike in a position to accelerate. That's it, right? We all go back to what's the fastest way around the racetrack, and we've talked about that before. We know we know, right? The rider that's a wide open throttle, essentially the longest, the rider is going to have the best lap time or positive acceleration is what we're looking for. So the entry just puts us in a position to make that happen, right? Let's let's not forget that. There you go. So that's that's the first step, right? So bike placement on entry. First, where, where this really really comes at, comes at with us is bike placement on entry, right? We talk about bike placement and exit direction, but bike placement on entry is essentially maximizing what that corner has to offer, right? Getting the bike in the best possible entry position. Some of this just depends on the track, the environment, and the bike that you're on. And we can give some examples of that. Like we can take a look at um, Laguna Turn Nine, Rainy Corner. If you notice, you watch the MotoGP bikes; they'll only enter, they'll they'll only exit about middle of the track off a Rainy Corner. But a 600 or a small bike will use all the track, KTM bike, and they do that because it would take too long because the bikes accelerate so quickly. It would take too long to get the bike back over for 10. So. They're not going to use all the track where a 600 or a KTM bike has that time. So bike placement on entry, big, big deal there, right? Let's make sure we're maximizing it. If you have the time, you're going to use all the track on the entry. Absolutely. Why? Where would Rossi be, right? Where would Lorenzo be? Especially saw that with Lorenzo this weekend uh, in, uh, in his last race with Yamaha. Simply amazing. So what's next? 
what's coming at me. Be be ready to anticipate it, right? Be in a position to anticipate what's happening with that. And the big one is, what does the next corner have to offer? Is it an entry corner? Is it an exit corner? Is it more than 90 degrees? Is it less than 90 degrees? All right, so, so being in a position to anticipate what the next corner is, right? And then that way on our bike placement, we're taking advantage of that on our entry. So bike placement on entry, you bet. You bet there's a, there's, there is something there. So there you go on that one. Vision and focus. Yeah, I think vision and focus um, uh, when it comes to, to entering a corner is one, you have to be able to see it early. See it early, right? So in other words, this goes back to what we just talked about is, is what's coming at me, what's next. Be ready to anticipate it. So see it early. Be in a position to make a decision early. So slow your thought process down. A lot of times that we see people that are rushing these entries is they're seeing everything very, very late, right? They're coming very reactive. So also with vision and focus, find your reference points. Find your reference points early. Right? The earlier you see them, the more time you have to make a decision. So find your reference points. Find um, the place on the track uh, once you're at a consistent lap time, fairly consistent lap time. Find the place on the track where you want to move the bike over. Find, the, find where you want to be parallel with the track before you turn in. Find your, your turn in point. Right? Get your vision and focus going so you can do that. And... That right there will, will again save you just so much time and and feeling like you're you're very very rushed. So, <clears throat> vision focus right. See it early. Be in a position to make a decision early, and a lot of that just 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 getting the eyes into play and thinking thinking of what's next. Next we have we'll move on to uh, to motor controls, and when I when I say motor controls, these are just all of the inputs that you you tell the bike. So. Now you got the bike in the right spot. That's fantastic. You got your eyes in play. That's fantastic. Now, when you go to the brakes, go to the brakes when you're scared, of course. So you go to the brakes when you're scared, thinking about your initial braking, right? Your first 5% of your braking. That first 5% is what allows you to adjust for the upcoming situation. And all of, all of the motor controls, right? All of these inputs that you put in, and I know I just said it about brakes, but I, I want to go back and step back a little bit because I, I saw a lot of issues with this, the, the, especially the last, uh, last some of the last schools, Rick schools that I did, was we just saw a lot of a lot of overdoing of the, a lot of the initial inputs. All those inputs need to be a lot smoother and a lot more subtle than you think. So that first five percent of the brakes, the first five percent of your throttle, first five percent of your body movement, all, all those things, they, they've got to be in there. So initial braking, first 5%, be in a position to adjust. Then once, once you start you start that initial braking, you're gonna go right to downshifting. So as my fingers are reaching for the brake lever, they're reaching for the clutch lever as well, right? In other words, my foot is already pretty much in place at that point. And as soon as my fingers go to the brake lever and start my brake squeeze, well, my downshifting process is happening at the same time. Braking or downshifting should happen within the first 5% of that brake zone, right? Let's get that, let's get it going. It doesn't happen before you go to the brakes and you don't wait till you're really deep into the corner. There are some crazy, crazy long radius corners where you'll do your last downshift fairly late because you want to keep your overall speed up, but not very many of them. There's, those, are, those are definitely the outliers there. So let's get all of your downshifts done and let's really, same thing with your motor controls, Let's work on your last clutch release. Auto blippers, right? Why do they have auto blippers? To blip. So the faster you go, the bigger that blipping, what a bigger deal that blipping is. And same thing with that last clutch release, right? These are all things that are encompassed in that mo in your motor controls. So initial braking, first 5%, be in a position to adjust. Um, at this point, even your eyes scanning are part of your motor controls. Right, so as you reach for the brakes, you go to the brakes. You you start your brake, get your initial braking going. Your eyes move in, my eyes, eyes move in to where you're letting off the brakes. Eye scanning is a motor control as well, right? So let's get this game going. Go to the brakes, eyes in, eyes back, eyes in, eyes back. Now you're looking for that turn in reference point. So I I also want to talk a little bit about um, I mentioned it also, but I want to I want to reiterate reiterate it again. 
the initial body movement is a bigger deal than you think. I see riders that either they, they don't load the peg, right? They don't move in enough, too slow, or they move their upper body way too much, but they move it too so quickly, they actually never load the peg. So let's make sure that there's a direct weight transfer. And I'll give you some report cards at the end of this that happens with that. So breaks, right? So let's look at breaks, order the sport. And with breaks, we're not going to overcomplicate this because we've already started to put ourselves in the position with this. And really what it boils down to is where am I letting off the brakes? At this point, you should be in a position to know where you're letting off the brakes, right? You've got your bike placement going, you've got your motor controls established, and now you should be able to use your eyes thinking about where am I letting off the brakes? So letting off the brakes, counting down that last 5%, and that leads me to the, to the last little part of brakes, which is brake timing, right? How something to go back and listen to that podcast on brake timing, right? When should you have maximum brake pressure? When should you be, when, when should you be um, letting off those brakes and how you do it? So brakes, you should be in a position at that point um, um, to be thinking about that. We have turn and rate and turn and point. And really the, what we have with turn and rate and turn and point is adjusting for the radius of the corner. And same thing with the, same thing with the turn in, um, um, your turn in point is how are you getting to your apex? How are you getting to the exit? And, and don't be afraid to be a little bit of adjustable with that. Think because we, again, we've got some report cards on that and you can adjust how you're getting to the edge of the track based on your turn in point and your turn in rate. So again, that's one that we want to take a look at as well. The other one that we see on this that I really have noticed, uh, especially the last few months, is understanding the faster you go, the earlier your process has got to get going. Go, if, if you're on MotoGP.com, go watch Lorenzo's qualifying lap um, at Valencia this last weekend. Oh my gosh. It's shocking how early he has to get things done because he's going so fast. So the riders that are thinking that they're going to try to accelerate more and more and more, but they're trying to go to the brakes later and turn in later. No, that's not going to work. You will run out of time. You will run wide. You will not get your apex. You will not get bike placement when you need that to happen. So turn and rate, turn and point, huge deal as well. Fast you go, the earlier it has to happen. So this is interesting. Um, this podcast uh, I'll take a quick little thing here. Yeah, I actually had to write two pages of notes on uh, on this podcast as I as I started going on this one. So uh, we're already into this for uh, almost 13 minutes, and I still got a ways to go. So yes, you're going to get overwhelmed. Um, so get your notebook out. All right. So then we've got body position and body timing, and with body position and body timing, there's there is a lot that goes on there. We've already talked about some of it, but really with body position and body timing on corner entry is never enter the brake zone in the middle of the seat. That's it, right? Let's, I'm, I'm, I still see a lot of that going on, a huge amount of that going on, entering the brake zone in the middle of the seat. Hey, if you want to lose four tenths every corner, pff, knock yourself out. I don't. I want to work less, especially as I'm getting a tad bit uh, older. I want to work less. So you got two left-hand corners in a row. Keep your butt off to the left. Why make your life so difficult? If you're paid for every thousandth of a second, you'll put your butt back to the middle of the seat on longer straightaways if there's an aerodynamic advantage, but we're not, right? We're not. And even then, the difference is probably so minimal that it's really not gonna make a difference. So let's not go back to the middle of the seat. Um, if you are at a very, very high level of racing, yeah, you're gonna try to go for every thousandth of a second. I absolutely get that. So that's why we're gonna say never enter the brake zone in the middle of the seat. You want to over slow? Great. You want to run wide? Great. You want to go four tenths a corner slower? Great. Do it. But I'm telling you, don't ever enter the brake zone in the middle of the seat. So there you go. And that with, with that right there, we pretty much covered quite a bit of having some fantastic um, repeatable habits for entering the corner. And if of all of this happens, you'll be very shocked at how easy direction comes to you, right? Exit direction, you'll be, it, it's, we don't actually talk too much about the exit of the corner because typically we don't have to because it becomes so easy. Um, I got to uh, work with um, uh, M4 uh, Superstock rider and uh, also it was Yoshimura Superbike rider Jake Lewis this last week. And he's like, God, can you don't talk about the exits very much. 
And uh, and then and then he paused. He goes, because you don't have to when you get the entry right. He's like, the, the exit is so easy at that point. Yes, it is. Yeah, so that's why we work so hard on that entry. So the exit comes to you and the exit's a lot easier than you think. And we realize that a lot of the times we've got inconsistent exits because we have inconsistent entries. So that's why we work so hard on that. Uh, boy, that was just a great, a great, great lesson um, of working with uh, Freddie Spencer uh, on, on how he taught us that. It was just uh, absolutely amazing. And we watched what he did. And then we would ask him questions and, and you know just decode all the different things that he did. So, so anyway, if you get on the, on the exit, if you do all this, the exit takes care of yourself. Now, with the exit, what you're focused on is direction. Do I have direction? How is my initial throttle? Is my core tight? And if, you know, your initial throttle, if your initial throttle is abrupt, tighten up that core, make sure the weight is where you want it in your lower body. I'll talk about that in a second. And then you can start using body and throttle together on the exits to get the bike picked up. We've got some great report cards for all of this. One is your overall track usage. How are you getting to your exits, right? This all goes back to bike placement. How are you getting to your exits? Making sure you're taking advantage of the entries, pause, where applicable. If you could open up the entry, do it. But remember, it's what lasts longest in certain situations. We won't use all the track on some of the exits. Some of the entries, we won't open up all because the next section before or after, the, the section before or after is more important. So make sure your track usage overall is what it needs to be. Initial brakes, man, it is, um, that, that is, I'm just seeing that becoming a bigger and bigger deal with initial braking. Um, and uh, that was some points that were really brought up to me um, this year with some of the high level riders that I work with that we just don't spend enough time talking about initial braking and using that as a report card as well. Let's, let's also take a look as you enter the corner, as you start to get in there, another report card. How's your inside foot? Your inside foot and your outside thigh is what sets you up to take weight off of your inside arm as you go in. So there's a great report card there. Is your inside foot engaged, your outside thigh engaged? That's what's going to take the weight off your inside arm. Which leads me to, is there weight on your inside arm? Another great report card. And remember, what we're talking about is, is that there is, you know, yeah, you got to hold on to the handlebar. I'm not saying that your arm, you should be able to take it off, though you should be able to take it off. There's going to be some pressure on your arm for sure. But what we want to make sure is that we don't have that steering head locked up so the bike won't turn and you're not able to get your upper body over. So weight on that inside arm. Man, that, that again is another one, is, is a big one. Another report card, where am I letting off the brakes? Where am I letting off the brakes? How much neutral throttle do I have? And right there, those, those things right there will start to allow you to adjust your end of braking pressure, um, your turning rates, turning points, things like that, and your brake timing. The other one that I look at when I'm riding is, right, when do I have direction? thinking about when do I have direction? Man, that is just like the one that I am really thinking about. When do I have direction? Because I want to accelerate. That's what's fun. And once I know that I have direction, all I'm focused on at that point is when can I be at full throttle? Man, that's that's that all goes back to what we're looking at. So I know this podcast ran a little bit longer, but we've got some good stuff in there for you. And these are the repeatable right? Let's build these repeatable habits that's going on with your riding. I can guarantee in, this, in something in here that we just talked about is something that, that you're not doing or something that we need to work better at. So, and this is also something that, that um, was said to me last week that I, I thought was really interesting. And I want, I want to bring it up here at the end is with motorcycles, right? Everybody says, oh, you know, motorcycles is kind of like an art form. And you know what? Without technique, <laughs> motorcycle riding is an art. It's completely abstract without technique. But with technique, motorcycle riding becomes completely quantifiable, right? This is something that we can quantify. We have data, right? We have we have these report cards. We have technique to make that happen. So if you think you can't do this because you're not good enough, you think you can't do this because you're not you're not um, you you're not the artist type, get into the technique. Get into the technique and let these techniques build, let these habits build, and I think you'd be very surprised at what you can do.